Welcome to the next video in the evolution unit. This video will be looking at evolution of Australian biota.8.5.1b, which is identify data sources, gather, process, and analyze information from secondary sources, and use available evidence to illustrate the changing ideas of scientists in the last 200 years about individual species, such as the platypus, as new information and technologies have become available. So this video is just going to be a little bit of a bit of a little bit of a background on to what the platypus was believed to have been once it was first discovered and then how through uh, sort of touching on the technologies that are available, how those ideas have changed. And then what you are going to do is go away and do your own research using the sources that are available in your booklet to uh, complete the activities. So when the first specimen of a platypus was sent back to England after the European settlement of Australia, it was thought to be a hoax. The platypus seemed to be an impossible animal with a duck-like bill, fur like an otter, webbed feet and a sharp poisonous spur on the back of its leg. It was eventually accepted as real but when it became known that it re reproduced by laying eggs, it and the echidna were classified into a separate subclass of mammals, the monotremes. So echidnas and platypus both come under the uh, class of mammals. They give birth to live young. However, these guys lay eggs. They uh, take care of their young. So after the eggs hatch, the platypus then uh, takes care of their infants and they're warm-blooded. So for more than a century, the monotremes were considered as living fossils and thought to be extremely primitive and therefore somehow inferior to the mainstream placental mammals like humans. Uh, but also if we're talk, uh, talking about um, animals that live in the wild, kangaroos, koalas, those that um, gave birth to their young, uh, sorry, gave birth to live young. So the marsupials were thought to be only slightly more advanced and the consensus was that Australian fauna, like much of the nation itself, was a little bit backwards. It was thought that the only reason such primitives had survived in the modern era was because Australia had been so isolated that they faced no competition from superior or more advanced mammals. That perception is changing. With fossil discoveries in South America of platypus-like animals, we've proved that monotremes did not just evolve in Australia, but in wider Gondwana. They had already faced competition from advanced placental mammals before Australia became isolated, and they won. Furthermore, the, re uh, sorry, furthermore, the more research is done on the platypus and other native Australians, the more scientists realise that these are not primitive creatures at all. Yes, they have an ancient lineage, but they are highly adapted to the unpredictable Australian climate and have thrived through millions of years of ecological changes in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Australia's native plants and animals are now being seen as ancient but highly sophisticated life forms. So how has our use of technology changed our ideas of the platypus? So through your research, you'll be looking at things such as data logging, radio telemetry, radio tracking, molecular biology such as genetic fingerprinting and computer, computer modeling and these have resulted in biologists being able to gain much more understanding of various aspects of the biology of the platypus. Although these techniques have often produced new understandings and insights, sometimes they've simply confirmed the conclusions that were already made by the careful observation of naturalists. So those uh, technologies that are listed there will give you an opportunity to have a look at what they used in the past, so how they simply um, followed the platypus and took visual observations. But then now, obviously, with the advancement of technology, in particular molecular biology, they're able to look at the DNA of the platypus and see how it fits in with the rest of classification. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.